Welcome to part two of the 1144 scale U.S. fighter aircraft series. This is Jim Kelsey, and thank you for stopping by the YouTube channel. Pictured on the display's turnstile is a Seversky XP-41. Now, X stands for experimental, and generally the aircraft companies make either one or two of these prototypes before they actually go into production. Uh, Compared with the P-35, this is like a step up from that. And uh, the bulky re half-retracted landing gear, the P-35, was replaced by a fully re retractable system folding inwards. And so looking at the two planes here, so um, have here, you can see the underside, the P-35's in my right hand right here, and this is the XP-41, so a little bit different and then we have a different landing gear altogether. Now, uh, the model kit here was again done by Kami de Korokoru of Japan. You can purchase the P-35 model. I will leave a link uh, there. And then you're gonna have to make the adaptation for the uh, XP-41 if you choose to, to do it that way, choose to make it. It's pretty much the same kit other than the underside I had to, to carve out and then, of course, make the landing gear match that of the photo. So pictured here, we have the XP-42. This was made by Curtis. And this, again, is a Riveresco white metal model. I built this in uh, 2011. So the XP-42 was taken off of the fourth P-36A and it was used extensively for evaluation as of, of long cord cowlings on radio radial engines. It was delivered in March of 30, 1939, and uh, the United States Army Air Force knew that we were lagging behind compared to the Europeans. Um, overseas, a Spitfire, the Hurricane, the Messerschmitt BF-109 fighters powered with inline engines were exceeding the performance of the latest American fire, fighters. So this attempt was to take, try to take away from the drag of what they had with the P-36. And uh, although it was faster than the P-36 with a top speed of 344 miles per hour, um, it was slower than the P-40, which was capable of 347 miles per hour under the same conditions. So really wasn't much of an improvement. Now here you can see the uh, P-36 and compare that with the XP-42. So again, I took the Riveresco P-36 model and then modified it accordingly in order to make the, uh, to make the P XP-42. The underside, I think, is more or less really roughly the same, but of course the cowling is much different. And so I don't remember what I used uh, on that cowling. Maybe I had an extra cone or something or carved it completely out of plastic. I, I, I don't quite recall. Pictured here, we have the P-43 Lancer. Now, this was produced by Republic, which, if you'll recall, was the originally the Seversky company. And this began as a successor to the, P, to the supercharged XP-41. Originally developed under the company designation AP-4, the plane first appeared with a close-fitting cowling that blended into the huge pointed spinner. The, this attempt at streamlining the big air-cooled radial engine was accompanied by the same overheating problems found in the Curtis XP-42. May 1939, 13 YP-43s, Y for prototype, were ordered for service evaluation. On the basis of reports from Europe, which were in the first stages of the World War, the YP-43 was already obsolete. The Army placed an order for 80 of these, a progressive development of the AP-4 design as the P-44s, ones, with, a th with 1,400 horsepower Pratt & Whitney engines. Named the rocket, the P-44 differed little in appearance from the P-43, <clears throat> but had prospects of greater performance, including a top speed of 386 miles an hour. <coughs> now, the, uh, the P-43 really wasn't all of that fast of a plane. All the P-43s, um, uh, they, they reached a top speed of 356 miles per hour. They had been delivered 
before the United States entered the Second World War, and the remaining of them were just used as reconnaissance planes. Um, and so here we have uh, the design of the P-44. This was never put into production. This was just basically a drawing board design. And uh, so comparing the two, you can see that it's got a not quite as wide a wingspan, but it's more or less just kind of the same kit. Now, this kit happened to be uh, made from 21st century toys, and it was uh, the P, I believe it was a P P47, no, it, maybe it was a P43 uh, that I got. I don't have anything particularly in my notes on that. Both of these were made by, uh, oh, actually that one, this one's made by a 21st century toys. And um, this was a scratch built kit that I made from uh, just basically out of a combination of acrylic and styrene plastic. And uh, the decals here were made by myself and this one was uh, made by uh, Kami de Korokoro. So here we have the P45. This really is the P45C made by Bell, the Era Cobra. And so if you go online to find pictures of this, this is what you will see. Um, it has the Army logo on it, and then uh, the number uh, 15 along the side. Uh, this kit happened to be made by Ravel. It's a styrene plastic kit, so it's very easy to find. And uh, it's uh, I built this in 2010. The decals were a combination of ones that I cut out from just basic numbers that you can purchase, as well as letters that say Army on it. So picture now is the Curtis XP46. This is one that I carved from scratch. It's acrylic and styrene. Made the decals myself. Uh, this was Curtis's attempt to try to incorporate more of the European designs into their P36 slash P40 model. And uh, it, it was hoped that it would have a speed of 410 miles per hour at 15,000 feet but it really fell short of what their hopeful desires were. Uh, the first XP-46 was to fly uh, <clears throat> February 1941, <clears throat> although smaller in proportion, lighter in weight than the P-40, displayed a disappointing performance characteristics. Maximum speed was 355 miles per hour at 12,000 feet, and uh, it, it adopted some of the features that, like the Messerschmitt BF-109, including automatic leading edge slats and up to eight wing-mounted guns. So it wasn't much of an improvement over the existing P-40. Here we have a very famous P4, Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. This model is a P-47D made by Minicraft, one that you could purchase easily. I built this in 2008. So it's using the decals that came with it. So Re Republic, which used to be Seversky, this was their big improvement on the design. So I'm going to place their P36 design, P35 design right next to it. And uh, keeping with the gigantic proportions of the fighter, the engine turned over a 12-foot propeller. In order to mount the landing gear in the wing and still have room for eight machine guns, still provide ground clearance for the propeller, the designers used a telescoping strut, which lengthened the gear nine inches when it was lowered. It weighed twice as much as its contemporaries. The P-47 was the largest, heaviest, single-engine, single-seat fighter to reach the production stage. After two years of testing and refining, the huge fighter, now called the Thunderbolt, was ready for combat in April 1943. It was one of the best fighters that the United States Army Air Force had. It had a uh, wingspan of over 40 feet, a length of 36 feet. Uh, maximum speed was 429 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. It was nicknamed the Juggernaut by its pilots, or more affectionately, the Jug. Many times the big planes returned from missions with great quantities of daylight showing through the airframe and even with portions of the engine blown away, the venerable, durable jug brought its pilots home safely. Here on the display turnstile, we have kind of a strange little plane made by Douglas, the XP-48. This was built by myself, a combination of 
acrylic uh, and styrene. And uh, this one never made it beyond the drawing stages, the drawing board stages. So where I took my guide from was, uh, was of course, the Lloyd S. Jones book. And here you see the three view drawings where I based my uh, model on. So probably about a quarter of my models were scratch built in this whole entire series. Um, XP48 design. Uh, it was <clears throat> was designed in 1939 to offer the Army Air Force a small, lightweight, high-altitude fighter powered by <clears throat> a 12-cylinder inverted V Ranger SVG 770 engine. This combination was provided 525 horsepower for the little S fighter, but no estimate performance. Uh, the tricycle landing gear retracted rearwards, the nose gear rotating 90 degrees, and the main fold, main gear folding into the fuselage sides in the same manner as that of the bombers. So its wingspan was 32 feet. Uh, overall length was just shy of 22 feet. Uh, why it never went into production? It, the uh, information does not say in the book, but uh, all we have are drawings, and so this is my model version of that. So the final plane in today's video is a Lockheed XP-49. So you may look at that and say, wow, that looks like a P-38. And you can judge that, yes, this was based on the P-38 construction. Uh, this was Lockheed solution to uh, try to make an improvement over the P-38. Uh, and uh, Lockheed received an orders in October 1939. Contract was signed January 1940. The design included several advanced features, a uh, pressurized cabin, two 20 millimeter cabins, 90 rounds of ammunition. And it was uh, <clears throat> after a few days of flight testing, which it took its maiden flight on November 11th, 1942, uh, they initially had some problems. Hydraulic failure yet to, led to a crash landing, but the damage, while serious, did not necessitate, necessitate termination of the program. A month and a half later, testing resumed, but the XP-49 did not display any notable advantages over the P-38, so plans for reproduction were discarded. Now, this is not that it went; it stopped all altogether. Uh, they did eventually conclude uh, with the XP-58, a much larger version. But let's put these two side by side here. I'll get rid of the display case, and you can see that it is a slightly larger version than the P-38, but not extremely bigger. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, put a like in the like area if you did. The next uh, video will go from the XP-50 through the Bell P-59, America's first jet fighter.